Okay, next up we're going to uh, increase the current going into the cell and the voltage and run another test and see how that affects the overall output and the efficiency. Uh, I just want to point out I had to make a repair to the uh, one of the clip leads that I thought had been soldered. When you buy these clip leads at a hobby shop or Radio Shack or wherever you get them, pull all the hoods back and touch them up with solder. All they are is crimped on and they have a tendency when you put, put current through them to uh, make a very bad connection and cause you much more grief than they're worth. So spend a little time, put some solder on there, make them uh, make them nice and uh, nice and snug. All right, <coughs> the uh, meter on the shunt is showing 15.4 millivolts. I happen to know that there is exactly 15 amps going into the cell, and that the positive temperature coefficient of the shunt has caused it to indicate a little bit higher than, than what is actually going in. And to prove it, I'm just going to put my fingers on it and I'm going to cool it down a little bit. 15.3, 15.2, 15.1, okay. So I'm going to let go and it'll come right back up again to about 15.3, 15.4. So when I, uh, when I uh, increase the current, I'm going to subtract about uh, four to five tenths of an amp on the reading to have the actual true reading. The uh, voltage is uh, now folding back. The power supply that I have connected to it is only capable of 15 amps. And now that the cell is warmed up, it wants to draw more than 15 amps at 13.8 volts, which is why uh, the, the current has, has limited and the voltage is now folding back to 12.67 right now. So, I'm going to turn on the variac and I'm going to boost up the the total voltage and current going into the cell and hopefully get up around 250 watts and we'll do a test and see wh how that affects the overall output. Here we go. Alright, we have 20 amps now going into the cell. Subtract a half an amp, so call that 19.5 at 13.22 volts. I'm going to start the HHometer. One, two, three, mark. And you can see that is rising pretty quick. Ten seconds. Fifteen. Twenty. 25, 27 seconds. Uh, all right, I got to turn that off now. I'm, I'm already smelling the variac. It's only <laughs> it's only good for five amps. You never know, but based on what I'm doing to it. Anyway, 500 milliliters in 27 seconds. That's a little over one liter per minute. In just a second, I'll have the exact numbers for you. Okay, and the numbers are we had 260 watts going into the cell. I produced 1.111 liters per minute. At that rate, uh, I had a efficiency of 4.27 milliliters per minute per watt going into the cell. Uh, this is at 13.22 volts, an average of 19.7 amps through, through the run, through the series. So as you can see, the original run was uh, uh, 3.89 milliliters per minute per watt efficiency at 185 watts input. 185? Yeah, 185 watts in. At 260 watts in, uh, my efficiency and my production went up. Both went up. And that's uh, consistent with the findings that I've had for, for these cells. So when I have this in the car, this thing is probably running at someplace around four and a half milliliters per minute per watt, and I'm putting out roughly when it's warmed up uh, maybe a liter and a half a minute. I was very pleasantly surprised the other evening. I uh, was running some tests in the car, <coughs> and I was adjusting the the EFIE, and all I did was disconnect the hose from the outlet of the bubbler and immediately 
perceive the engine RPMs dropping. And when I put the put the tube back onto the bubbler, the, the uh, engine idle actually smoothed out, and the I could easily perceive the the rise in in RPMs of the engine. So I was ple very pleasantly surprised with that. Uh, at this point, I'm going to stick it back in the car. We're going to run it for a few days, see how it does. <coughs> and uh, right now, I'm going to go in because it's cold out in the garage. <laughs> And it's raining outside right now, so uh, I'm going to call it a night. Zero fossil fuel.